Praise the Lord, Lord, our Christian life and friends that are joining us today. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He is still in control. Welcome everybody on Facebook that's visiting, maybe for the first time today. We welcome you tonight to uh, Wednesday Night Bible Study. Let's go to the Lord with our prayer request tonight. Uh, Brother Eli Hernandez, he is not doing very well. Uh, we need to pray for the Lord to work a miracle in his life. It's uh, been reported maybe a couple days left to live, but you know what? The Lord can step in, and the Lord can work a miracle. Amen. Uh, let's remember the Brother Schaefer family. Let's remember Andreas Manera, Brother David Doyle, Linda Boyd. Let's remember Karen Stevens, Stan Haddad, Sister Joe's neighbor Tracy. Amen. Let's go to the Lord with these prayer requests tonight. Lord, we worship you, Lord Jesus. We praise you tonight, Lord God. Hallelujah. We give every name, every need to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the creator of heaven and earth, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, I ask you tonight, Lord Jesus, that you would touch Brother Eli Hernandez, Lord God. Let your perfect will be done, Lord God. But we're asking for your intervention today that you would touch his body, Lord Jesus. That you would heal him, Lord God. That you would get all the glory, honor, and praise for the miracle that you could work in his life, Lord Jesus. In your precious name, Lord God, we ask you to touch our brother Schaefer family, Lord Jesus. Andreas Manera, Lord God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother David Doyle, Lord Jesus, Lord, we ask you to touch Linda Boyd today, Lord God. Karen Stevens, Lord Jesus, Stan Haddad, Lord God, Tracy, Lord Jesus. Lord, we give every name, every need, every situation to you, Lord God. You know the beginning from the end, Lord God, hallelujah. You know who you're going to reach, draw people closer to you in Jesus' name. You would get all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm excited to be here tonight with you all um, at home. Um, it's been a while. I um, haven't seen many of you guys, but I'm excited and looking forward to seeing you all on Sunday. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm here to share the word for if it's your first time visiting us online. Welcome. If you're part of Lord at Christian Life, miss you guys. Praying for you guys. Um, if you're visiting from another church and just you know on Facebook, welcome as well. Um, well, tonight we're going to open our Bibles in uh, Psalms 91. Amen. Psalms 91. Um, if you can open your Bibles at home, um, and the Word of God says, "He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High." shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm going to read that one more time, and it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, right there where you're at at home, I wonder if you could just bow your heads, grab your spouse or the person next to you, and just, just pray. Lord Jesus, Lord, I ask you, God, to move tonight, Lord, wherever everybody's at tonight, God, I pray that your presence, that your word, Lord, open our minds, open our understanding, God. Lord, I want to be able to understand your word. I want to be able to feel your presence at home, God. Lord, you can move in any place, in any circumstance, in any house, any place, Lord. Move tonight, Lord, in our households, God. I pray that your word speak to us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, if I can put a title to this message, it'd be, um, when you dwell, you have unlimited access. When you dwell, you have unlimited access. Um, so this is a verse that, that I'm going to read the verse one more time. And it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Right when we read this verse, it says, he that dwelleth. He that dwells. Um. Many of us have seen this verse, or many of us have maybe heard this message before, or have heard or seen it, whether it's um, in, a, in a frame or in a picture at their, at their, at their homes. Man, many of us may have that. Um, I've seen people at, at times even open their Bibles and have it open in this Bible verse and have it in their homes. And, and they do these type of things, but you know, it, it, there's something that goes beyond just having the, the Bible verse and just having it hung in the wall or, or just having the Bible open and just... You know, something go, there's something that goes beyond that. It's, it's more than a religion. It's more than, than just practicing that. It's, it's actually understanding what this scripture is saying and actually having a revelation of, of what the word is trying to say. There's nothing wrong with having all of these things. There's nothing wrong with having all of these, these frames. But we have to truly understand what the scripture and what the word of God is trying to tell us. When we read this, we see the... Um, 
that it, it starts off with what the psalmist is trying to tell us. We, we see that um, it's either David or Moses or, or there's, there's different ideas of who wrote this, this scripture, this, this chapter, Psalms 91. But when we read this, we see the psalmist, uh, he's trying to tell us something from the very beginning. Right off the bat, when we read this, it says, he that dwelleth. There's an initial condition, and it's for those that dwell. It's for those that dwell in that secret place. God is not interested in just a visit. God is not interested for you to just be there for a little time. God is interested in you to be there dwelling. We were born not to just visit, but we were born to actually dwell in the presence of God. You see, God did not create you to just be, uh, to pass the time and just to visit the presence of God. No, no, no. God created you and I to be dwelling in his presence, to have a deep relationship with him. What happens a lot of times is that when we, we, we become people who just visit the presence of God, God is not looking for just visitors of his presence. He's not looking for people that just stay there for a little time. He's actually looking for people that live and dwell in this place. A lot of times what can happen is that we're living in this quarantine. We're living in this, 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 um, this time that, that may seem out of the ordinary. And, and, and we can at times fall into just visiting the presence of God in these times. We can be in this time and we can just be visiting the presence of God, whether it's just Wednesdays, Sundays, or maybe twice a week, or maybe just once a, once a week. And we can fall into this, this trap of just visiting the presence of God. You see, God has asked us. This is a time where, where God wants us to truly dwell in his presence. God is asking us, asking the church, yes, we're not in a building. Yes, we're not, we're not in a confines of a building. We're at home. And this is the time where God is asking us to not just dwell on a Wednesday, not to just dwell on a Sunday, not to just dwell on a Sunday night, but to actually live and dwell in the presence of God daily. Because this is a time where the church needs to be dwelling in the presence of God. It was not God's plan for us to visit the presence of God, but instead it was God's plan for us to dwell in his presence. Those who dwell, perhaps, perhaps, um, perhaps you've been visiting the, the, the presence of God throughout this quarantine here and there. Perhaps you've been slipping, but, but God is giving us an opportunity. God is wanting to remind us tonight. God is wanting to remind you at home that, that even though maybe you've been, you've been just visiting the presence of God, maybe life has gotten busy, and maybe you know, there's, there's things that you're, you're taking care of at home, and maybe there's a lot of things going on, but, but maybe we've forgotten that, that, you know what, I'm just visiting the presence of God, but God is asking us tonight, dwell in my presence. Dwell in my presence. I created you to dwell in my presence, and I will give you access to so much i will give you access to peace to tranquility to uh, to financial i will give you so much if you begin to dwell in my presence you see that uh, I, I i began to try to figure out what this dwelling mean and and uh i'm not i'm not the biggest you know like into that type of person that likes to the Hebrew and the Greek and all that, but I, I do see the validity in, in actually understanding what the root is and what it means because the original text was written in Hebrew. So um, I do see the, va the validity of it. So I actually went to, to look at what dwelling means. And, and when, when I went to look, at, look it up in the Hebrew, it means yash yashab. And yashab has two uh, meanings. And when the first meaning that, that really stuck out to me, which was living, living, living. And if we put, plug this word in, it would read, He that is living in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's about living every day in the presence of God. We can't just visit. We need to live with God every day. We need to sleep, eat when we wake up every single moment. We need to be abiding. We need to be living in the presence of God. Let me give you an example. A lot, a lot of the times, whether it's a, a, a family gathering, a Christmas, or a Thanksgiving, or Easter, I know this Easter was maybe a little different, but, you know, you usually have family gatherings, or you open up your house, and you have people that come visit you, and you open up, you have food, and you have all of this set up on the table, 
and you have guests and people that come visit you. And they come, the visitors come to your house, and, and, and they have access to everything that's on the table. They, they, they have the seconds, they have the third plate, fourth plate, even fifth plate sometimes. They just go all out and, and get all, as much as they want on the table. And, and they get drinks, and, and, and it's all for them. They have access to this because they're guests. You know, they're, they're family, or, or they're like family, and they've been invited because they, they, they like them, and they know you, and they want to invite you. So you have access to everything on, in the table. But when you, when you go to the kitchen and when you go to the pantry, when you go to the fridge, you see the people that have access to this is those that are living there. Yeah, you may be family. Yeah, you may, you may know the person, but it's not the same as if you, living, you by living there, you have complete access to everything in that household. Those that are visiting only have access to what's available in the, in the, in the table and what's been available to what we've told you that's available. But if you live there, you have complete access to everything there because you live in that place. Have you been living your whole life eating as a visitor? Have you been living this, this quarantine by just, just eating a little bit, by, by eating as a visitor, but just having little bits and little bits of that and little bits of that? Or, or, or have you actually truly been living in the presence of God and having full access of what God has for you? The full course meal, access to everything that he wants you to have. Have you truly been living in the presence of God as he wants you to? I know there's a church that is. I know there's a church. I know Lodi Christian life. I know it may seem hard. I know things are aren't going the way that it may seem but i know there's a church out there i know there's a lot of christian life that has been faithful that has been living in the presence of god that has been seeking his face daily that has been wanting access of him every single day whether it's reading the word whether it's turning on the music to praise him whether it's driving and singing to christian songs it's hearing verses in the, in the of the bible whatever it may be i know we've done things to truly feel the presence of god that is what God is wanting us to do, to live in his presence. God has called us to live in his presence, brothers and sisters. Perhaps this is why we, we only have, you know, I, I, I kind of wonder sometimes, and, and this goes beyond just the quarantine, but I wonder sometimes we kind of ask ourselves, well, how come is it that I only have this portion of, of, of these things? How come I only have access to this? Or how come, you know, and, and I've, I've fallen there at times as well when we kind of ask ourselves, well, how come this person, you know, how come this person is, is, is blessed? Or how come this person, it has, it has a deep relationship with God? Or, or how come, what's the difference? What's going on? Does God have favors? What's, God, what is going on? And coming to think about it, you know, well, the reality is, is that these people have decided to have a deep, intimate relationship with God. They've dedicated themselves to not just be visitors of the presence of God, not to just visit his presence, but to actually dwell and live in his presence. And this is why a lot of the times we see people, these men of God, these women of God, have complete access to God has for them and this is what God wants for us today this is what God wants for the church today even though we're living in a quarantine God is calling the church to live in the presence of God to have complete access of everything he wants us to have because then when we have complete access of him and when we're dwelling and living in his presence that when we come back into the church when we come back into this building we're ready we're recharged we're ready to do what God has called us to do because we've been dwelling throughout this whole quarantine and living in the presence of God. Amen. God has called us to live in his presence. God is calling your family. God is calling your, your, your brother, your sister, your, your child, your children to live in the presence of God. As a church, myself, we're not just confined to live being in this building. As a church, we should be living in the presence of God and making our homes the church. Amen. I believe that. I believe that so wholeheartedly. That we need to be dwelling in, in the presence of God. And, and I'm speaking to myself as well because there's been times where we've, we've, we've slipped or we've, we've gotten careless and we've just been visiting the presence of God. But God is calling us to live in the presence of God in this time. Amen. The second, second um, 
meaning when we're reading the word Yeshaba of dwelling, what that means is, and I thought this was very interesting, and it was Mary, marrying, getting married, the word Mary. And when I, when I saw this, I was like, wow, you know, that's, that's interesting, you know, dwelling in Mary. I was like, hmm, okay. So then when I was reading it, I, I, I kind of was trying to figure out, well, what does that have to do with this Bible verse, Ma getting married and, and all this? And when you kind of think about what the word marriage or getting married means, it's, it's a commitment. It's a commitment. It's, it's like no other relationship that you've had in the past. It's a commitment with that one person. It's a commitment like, like no other commitment you've ever had. You're bound to that one person. It's not the same as any other relationships you had in the past. It's not the same as any other relationship perhaps you have with, with your spouse or with your sibling. But it's a relationship that goes beyond with the presence of God. God is wanting us to have an intimate relationship with him. Something deep like no other relationship that you've ever had before. And if you were to plug this meaning in into the Bible verse, it would read, He that makes a commitment to have a deep intimate relationship with the Lord in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So when you make a commitment and decide that I'm going to be married to Jesus, that I have left everything aside, my relationship goes beyond the relationship with my pastor, beyond the relationship with my leader, beyond the relationship with my spouse, beyond the relationship with my children. It's a relationship that goes deep. God is my number one relationship, especially in this time that we're living. God should be my number one. It's a bond. This is why we see in the scriptures in the New Testament how, how God um, uses the church as the bride. And, and, I, and it made me think, you know, well, well, God is calling the church, and we are the church. And as right now, the church, we're living in a, in a time that perhaps we're being tested and this is perhaps a, a time that, that the relationship of the church and God is perhaps being tested and what's going on and the commitment that we have with the Lord. And God is asking us, God is asking his bride, God is asking us, the church, to have a deep, intimate relationship with Jesus, to really make a bond and say, God, you are my number one. God, from now on, God, you are everything, God. When I wake up, God, my relationship with you should be my priority, God, because when I make you my priority, when I go, God, when you become my number one, I will have access to everything, God. I will know you better and I will belong to you and you will belong to me. It's about a commitment. God should be our number one relationship. I'm not saying that, that your relationship with your pastor or with your leaders or your spouse shouldn't, shouldn't be important, but God should be our number one relationship. God should come above everything. I know right now we're, we're living in this time that's, that may seem crazy and may seem out of the ordinary. And, and a lot of the times we, we, we can find ourselves dwelling in fear. We can find ourselves dwelling in, in, in wor being worried. We can find ourselves dwelling in, in, in being in a place where in the unknown and we don't know what's going to happen or we don't know where, where to go or, or, or our resources or, or what's going to happen with the church or, or God, what's going on with my relationship. And we begin to dwell in, in all, these, all these circumstances and all these worry things. And this is why God is asking us, asking the church, we need to dwell in the presence of God. God is asking the church. God is asking you. God is asking you at home, your family, everyone that's watching here tonight. God is asking me tonight to dwell in his presence, to dwell in his presence, to be living in his presence, to be married, to be one, to be one as, uh, with the Lord, to actually say, God, I am going to be dwelling in your presence from now on. God, I want to be with you every single moment, God. God, perhaps I've been dwelling in this God, perhaps I've been dwelling in that, but Lord, right now, God, I'm making a commitment to dwell in your presence, God. A lot of the times what happens is that we, we, we get used to the norm and, and it becomes a routine and we come to church and, and we feel the presence of God here and, and it's great. And, and, and we come recharged and we get excited, 
But when we go home, you know, it's like, you know what? Oh, can't wait to church on Sunday or can't wait for church on Wednesday. But right now we don't have the church building. Right now we don't have uh, perhaps pastor uh, uh, preaching to us in front of us. Uh, it's through a, through a screen or perhaps we don't, we don't have the music to usher in the presence of God. Or perhaps we don't have all these things that, that that's the norm. Right now it's a time where, where God is really testing the church and where God is really asking the church to, to have it. To, God is asking the church to, to really let a door open in their homes to really let God have access to their home so that we can be dwelling in his presence, so that we can be living with him. It makes, it makes me think, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day, and I was actually talking to Michaela the other day as well, and we talked about, you know what, it's, we live in a time where we're, we're, we're really worried. We're living in fear, and, and things may seem crazy, and there's nothing wrong with, with, with having emotions and having feelings, but it's important to know what to do with those emotions, what to do with those feelings, because we're human. We're human, and, and we go through things, and we think about things, and we overthink things sometimes, and we have feelings, and we have emotions, but what is it that you're going to do with those emotions? Where is it that those emotions or those are going to lead you? It can lead you into a pit, or you can take those emotions and say, God, you know what? I am being worried. I am fearful, Lord, but you know what, God? I am living in your presence. I am dwelling in your presence, God, because I know, God, if I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And if we continue reading on the verses, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and for the noisome of the pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou thrust. His thrust shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow of thy fleet by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall beside thee and ten thousand shall at the right hand but it shall not come nigh thee only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou has made the lord which is my refuge even of the most high my habitation all of these things that we read right here all of the things that god is trying to give us access to we're able to have access to all of these things if we begin to live and dwell and be married in one with the Lord. God has not changed. God doesn't change. Everything he prayed, everything he did with the people of Israel, protecting them from all the things, all the plagues in, the, in Egypt, protecting them through the desert, all the things he did protecting the church in the New Testament, all the things he's done for his people and for his children. God does not change, church. God does not change. The same powerful God that we have, the same almighty God that we have is the God that can protect us, is the same God that is there for us, is the same God that fights our battles is the same God that is with us when we're down and picks us right up is the same God that is with us every single moment God is asking you at home to be living in his presence God is asking you at home to put him as their number one priority and he will for sure have you in his number you and his number one priority right now I want us to all bow our heads Bow our heads, and I want us. I want us to grab, grab the person next to you at home, and and I want us to really pray and ask God to really let's make a commitment with the Lord tonight. Lord Jesus, tonight, God, I come before your presence, Lord. Lord, I've heard your word. I've received your word, God. Lord, you're asking me tonight, God, to be dwelling in your presence, God. Lord, I do not want to be just a visitor, God. Lord, I want to have complete access of what you have for me, Lord. Lord, I want to have complete access of everything, Lord. Lord, I want to be living in your presence, God. Lord, I want to be dwelling in your presence, God. Lord, I want my relationship lord to be deeper with you lord lord i want to get to know you lord like never before god lord i pray jesus lord that you bless my family god that you make you lord that i want to make you my number one 
priority in my family, God. Lord, perhaps everything's getting busy, Lord. Perhaps I'm getting worried, God. Perhaps things are out of control, God. Lord, but I know I serve a mighty God. I know I serve an all-powerful God that is with me, Lord. Lord, tonight I make a commitment, God, to serve you, Lord, and to have you as my number one, God. Lord, I want to live in your presence daily God Lord I worship you and I love you tonight God thank you for your word God thank you for your word God oh I pray that you bless every single family in their household tonight God Lord in the name of Jesus I pray God in Jesus name Lord in Jesus name amen amen thank you all for for being with us tonight I want to thank you guys for everybody every Lodi Christian life and those watching tonight for for viewing the video. I want to also remind each and every one of you guys that I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on Sunday. On Sunday, we will be having a drive-in service. It will be in 10, uh, the address is 1045 Cherokee Lane. Um, service starts at 11 o'clock, but please be there at 1045. God bless you all.